Good morning, and welcome to South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church's morning devotion for Wednesday, September 8th, 2020. I'm Linda Mori. The other day I was sitting in my car beside a fence. There were bushes and trees growing along the fence, so the driveway I was in was hidden from the yard on the other side. There were children playing there, and I overheard them talking and laughing. They were using phrases like, oh my God, and oh God, during their play, but they weren't thinking or talking about God. It makes me sad that phrases like this have become so common in our society. Most people seem to think them meaningless, but are they? I decided to do some investigating into some names, starting with my own. I found many sites that have different definitions according to languages. Linda in German, soft and tender. I like that. Old German, serpent, not so nice. Spanish and Portuguese, beautiful, pretty, cute. Italian, clean. South African, weight. Albania, birth and fertility. I also looked up Sue, as Sue Fuller is here with me today. Susan in Persian means lily flower. In Hindi, kin kinship. In Greek, a lotus flower. Hebrew, lily of the valley, or to be joyful. Modern Hebrew, a rose. Southern France, above or higher. The Urban Dictionary, generous, smart, open-minded, and ambitious. No serpent for her. Seriously, these words do remind me of Sue. God, Y-H-W-H, were the Hebrew letters given to Moses as the name of God. Yahweh was the God of the Israelites. Many thought it too sacred to be spoken and called him Adonai, my Lord, or Kairos, Lord. God is also called Elohim to show he has universal sovereignty over all of us. There are many other names for God as well. The Greek word Jesus, or Joshua in Hebrew, means savior, to save. God is salvation, to rescue or to deliver. Christ means anointed. Anointed is Greek for Messiah. Jesus is referred to as Messiah 514 times in the New Testament. Acts 17.3 says, This Jesus that I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. A more appropriate translation is God rescues. To believe in Jesus' name means to believe that God actively cares and actively goes about rescuing lost souls. The power of Jesus' name is the name itself. 1 John 3.23, and this is his commandment, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he has commanded us. John 1.12 says, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in Jesus' name, he gave the right to become children of God. Matthew 1.21 reads, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. Only this Jesus is referred to as Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. There is no other. When we pray, we pray in Jesus' name to recognize that we're coming to God in the righteousness of Christ, not our own. We don't deserve to be heard by God, but Jesus does. And we come in his name. God hears us because of Jesus. So what does it mean to take Jesus' name in vain? The third of the Ten Commandments found in Exodus 27 says not to take the name of the Lord in vain. The words in vain mean empty, idle, insincere, or frivolous. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The name of Jesus has power. God wants his people, his followers, to never take his name in vain, but to honor it instead. 
So we can now say yes, that when we say, oh my God, or oh God, we are indeed taking the Lord's name in vain. It's a frivolous use of God's name. So does that make the popular OMG acronym also taking God's name in vain? Some say it is not, because it's being texted, not actually said. Or that it doesn't really mean, oh my God, anymore, but it's more like a, an expression of, wow, or really? But if that's true, what then do the letters OMG stand for? According to ABC's Nightline, the Parents Television Council, reported in 2007 that 95.9 percent of the uses of the word God on Prime Network TV were in vain. As followers of Jesus, we are not to use the Lord's name casually or irreverently. To say Jesus Christ in any other way than in praise is an example of this. Matthew 6, 9 says, This, then, is how you should pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed or holy be your name. Psalm 99 says, The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. Leviticus 19.12 says, Do not swear falsely by my name. And so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Deuteronomy 5.11 says, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Psalm 111, 7 through 9. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever enacted in faithfulness and uprighteousness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Please listen or sing along as Sue and I sing the praise song, What a Beautiful Name.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we recognize that you are holy, and we bless your name in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Please help us to refrain from insincere and frivolous use of your, of your name. Help us not to use your name in vain, but to see you as sovereign and ruler, to know that you are mighty and that your name is power and worthy of praise. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bye. Have a great day.